Hello viewers, we are BSN Level 4, Block A4, Group 1 from Southwestern University FINMA. In this video, we are going to be talking about some of the fundamental things a nurse needs to know in the operating room. The topics in this video include surgical scrubbing, gowning, gloving, serving of gown and gloves, surgical timeout, and some surgical instruments. We hope that after watching this video, you will be equipped with proper knowledge about the topics we discussed. So, stick around and have fun learning! Medical Hand Washing First is to wet hands with clean running water. Then apply soap generously. Lather up Rub soap on palms in circular motion. Rub soap on back of both hands. And rub soap between fingers. Rub the soap on fingertips by interlocking them. And apply soap on both thumbs and rub it in half circles. Rub fingertips on palms. Then rinse hands thoroughly. If there is still soap remaining, you can wash again with the running water. After that, you have to wipe hands with clean, dry paper towel and use the towel on closing the faucet. Surgical Scrubbing First procedure is to assemble equipment and adjust water to a comfortable setting. Then wet hands and arms. If pre-washing with detergent from soap dispenser, lather hands and arms with soap and rinse. Remove scrub brush from package and using the nail cleaner provided, cleans the bungalow spaces. Scrub hands and arms carefully and correctly. Use the prescribed brush. Wet the brush to make it soapy. Then scrub fingernails, enter digitals, palm, back, wrist, forearm, two inches above the elbow, one after another using the anatomical pattern of scrubbing accordingly. It should be 30 strokes for fingernails and 20 strokes for all sides of the fingers, palms, and back of hand, and 20 strokes for each arm. Observe 5 to 7 minutes for the entire procedure. Discard the brush after use. Rinse hands and arms thoroughly under running water starting at fingertips and working toward the elbows, keeping hands upright and elbows down. You can repeat rinsing if your hands are still soapy. Maintain the hands in an upright position in coming into the theater. Gowning Picks up the sterile towel for drying hands while bending slightly forward. Drops the towel while maintaining sterility. Grasp the gown and locate the neckline while holding the sterile gown with care and keeping it from being contaminated. Steps back from the sterile table into an unobstructed area. Locates the armholes of the gown carefully. Extends arms horizontally at shoulder level and pushes hands into sleeves up to the cuff of seam. Extends finger to tip of cuff but not beyond. Avoids contamination during procedure. Allows the circulating nurse to fasten the ties at the back. Maintain correct movement. Pick the folded cuff of the glove with dominant hand hidden within the cuff of the gown. Places the palm of the glove against the palm of non-dominant hand. Pull the cuff of the glove against cuff of the gown. Adjust the glove over the gown cuff as necessary.
Keep the dominant hand inside the ground cuff. Repeat the same procedure on gloving the other hand. Serving the gown and gloves. First, we need to over the hand towel following the correct technique. And then, unfold the gown carefully, holding at the neckband so that the inside of the gown faces the wearer. Serves the armhole of the gown, allowing the person served to slip his arms into the sleeves. Release the gown at the shoulder height, allowing the person outstretched his arms and his back to be fastened by the circulating nerves. Then, offers the glove aesthetically. We need to first open the gloves, announce his hand to be gloved first. Pick the right glove, stretched open with the palm of the glove facing the person being served. Keep self steady while the person served inserted his hands into the glove. Does the same procedure with the other hand. Maintain a septic technique while serving the gown and the glove. Oh, surgical time out. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Angel Sinida, your student circulating nurse with Ms. Cara Bulasa, your circulating nurse for patient Mr. Alex Melendez, scheduled for posterior decompression with spinal diffusion from L3 to L4 under spinal anesthesia. Consent signed by the patient, witnessed by nurse on duty and resident on duty. Free of medication given, Sepiroxine 500mg via IVTP started at 11 a.m. given after negative skin test on April 19, 2022 at 10 a.m. Negative RT-PCR taken last April 17, 2022 at 2 p.m. Non-reactive for HB sub. Then introducing our surgical team headed by our surgeon, Dr. Gian de la Peña, our anesthesiologist, Dr. Ledlin Anasco, first assist, Dr. Alessandra Demilio, second assist, Dr. Melo Masag, and our student scrub nurse, Ms. Ana May Escalante, with our scrub nurse, Mr. Nathaniel Arcipe. Do you have any concerns before we start, Doc? No. You may now proceed with the operation. Thank you and God bless. Electrosurgical pencil, other names, bovi, cautery, monopolar cautery, diathermy, and electrocautery. Description, this is a disposable instrument that usually comes packaged with a blade tip and a holster. The current is activated by a switch or button on the pencil or with a pe foot pedal. There are several types of interchangeable electrode tips that fit into the handpiece. Some of the common types of the tips are blade, ball, needle, and extended blade tips. Uses Monopolar cautery uses electrical current to coagulate and cut blood vessels and tissues to provide homeostasis. It is also used for dissection. Halstead forceps, other names mosquito forceps and Hartmann forceps. Description It is a small curved or straight clamp with the fine tips and horizontal serrations that run the length of the jaws. Uses It is used for occluding bleeders in small or superficial wound before cauterization or ligation. Used often for delicate or small confined procedures. Some examples are plastic, pediatric, thyroid, and hand procedures. Also used with suture boots to tag delicate relief sutures in vascular procedures. Kelly forceps, other names hemostat, kral forceps, or clamp. It is a curved or straight clamp with horizontal serrations that run about half the length of the jaws. A general-purpose EMS and surgical tool to grasp very small objects when are too large. And its uses, it is used for occluding bleeders before cauterization or ligation. And they are used in surgery and in EMS operation to reach and grasp in the tightest areas. Mixture forceps, other names, right angle forceps, Gemini forceps, Lahey forceps, obtuse clamp, or ureter clamp. Its description is a 45-degree angle clamp with horizontal serrations that run the length of the jaws. Uses it is used to clamp, dissect, and occlude tissue. It is often used to place a tie or vessel loop under and around a tubular structure, such as a vessel or a duct, enabling the surgeon to grasp the ligature or loop and pull it up and around the suture to it either ligate or retract. These are straight mayo scissors. It is also known as suture scissors. It is a pair of heavy scissors with straight blades that is used for cutting sutures. 
In order to utilize this instrument, you have to use the very tips of the scissors when cutting sutures. Slightly rotate the scissors to visualize the knot or the appropriate length of the suture tail that will remain. However, some precautionary measures must be applied. The blades of the scissors should be inspected for nicks, dents, or burrs, which will not allow for smooth cutting. It is important to always check the screw to ensure it is fully tightened to prevent it from dropping into the wound. Meanwhile, these are Lister bandage scissors which are also known as simply bandage scissors. It is a pair of angled blunt scissors in which the lower blade has a smooth, flattened tip. It is used to cut dressings, drapes, and other items and also used in a cesarean section to open the uterus without harm to the baby. The flattened tip is designed to give these scissors the ability to get under dressings or drapes and cut the material without harming the patient. It is important, however, to always check the screw to ensure it is fully tightened to prevent it from dropping into the wound. This is a number 3 knife handle, which is also known as a number 3 scalpel handle or number 3 handle. A number 3 handle holds blades 10, 11, 12, and 15. Knife handles are used to hold various blades to create a scalpel. Scalpels are used to make skin incisions or whenever a fine precision cut is necessary. Because the skin is not sterile, once the skin incision is made, the scalpel should be removed from the mayo stand, isolated, and be used only to incise the skin. Never retrieve the scalpel from the surgeon's hand after use. Allow the surgeon to place it in the neutral zone. Never use fingers to load or unload a knife blade from the handle. Always use a needle holder. On the other hand, this is a number 3 long knife handle. This is also known as a long knife, long handle, or long scalpel. A number 3 long knife handle holds blades number 10, 11, 12, and 15. It is used for precision cutting deep within a wound. Just like your number 3 knife handle, never retrieve the scalpel from the surgeon's hand after it is used. Allow the surgeon to place it in the neutral zone. And never use fingers to load or unload the knife blade from the handle. Always use a needle holder. And now we are moving forward to the number 4 knife handle. Its other names include number 4 scalpel handle and number 4 handle. It has a larger tip to accommodate the larger blades. It is used with the number 20 blade to create a larger, deeper incision in heavy tissue areas. The number 4 handle will hold blades number 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Again, never use fingers to load or unload a knife blade from the handle. Always use a needle holder. And then we have our plain Adson tissue forceps, which is also known as Adson dressing forceps. This instrument has fine tips with horizontal alterations and is used for grasping delicate tissue. All of the Adson tissue forceps are the same size and shape. They are differentiated by the inner tips. Tooth tissue forceps, or what we call the rat tooth or tissue forceps with teeth. Its tips have two teeth on one side and one tooth on the other side that fits between the opposite when closed. This is used for grasping moderate to heavy tissue and used during wound closure. When using this instrument, it is important to ensure that the teeth are properly aligned and in working order before use. Plain Tissue Forceps This is also called the smooth forceps or tissue forceps without teeth. These are a traumatic tissue forceps with horizontal serrated tips that vary from fine to heavy. This is used for grasping tissue and dressing application. Debakey Tissue Forceps This instrument is an atraumatic tissue forceps with an elongated, narrowed blonde tip. A set of parallel fine serrations runs the length of one jaw with a center row of serrations on the opposite side that interlocks to grip when closed. Its uses include grasping numerous types of tissue and are commonly used in cardiac, vascular surgery, and gastrointestinal procedures. Debake tissue forceps are considered a vascular tissue forceps, but they are commonly used in all specialty areas because of the ability to secure grip without causing damage to the tissues. Forster sponge forceps. These can be curved or straight, and the tips are oval fenestrated rings with horizontal serration. 
This is used for creating a sponge stick, for grasping tissues such as the lungs, or for removing uterine contents. Alice forceps. This is curved or straight, with multiple interlocking fine teeth at the tip that reduces injury to the tissues. This is used for lifting, holding, and retracting slippery dense tissue that is being removed. This is also commonly used for tonsils, for vaginal, breast, and thyroid tissues, or for grasping bowel during resection. Towel Clip A towel clip is a reshaded instrument with curved, sharp, tine-like jaws. This is used for holding towels in place when draping and grasping tough tissue and during reduction of small bone fractures. Bobcock Forceps An atraumatic forceps with flared, rounded hollow end with smooth, flattened tips. This is used for grasping and encircling delicate structures such as the ureters, fallopian tubes, bowel, ovaries, and appendix. Army Navy Retractor, also known as Army's Navy's newest retractor. It is for retracting and exposing. It is a handheld double-ended retractor with an oval fenestration in the handle and a lateral curve to the blades on each end. One end is longer than the other so that it can be placed deeper into the wound. It is used for retraction of small superficial incisions to allow better exposure. Instrument inside. It is often packaged in pairs. Scent retractor, also known as cat paw retractor. It is for retracting and exposing. It is a double-ended handheld retractor in which one end has three sharp or dull claws and the other end is a small, narrow, laterally bent blade. It is used for retraction of skin edges and deeper tissues of small incisions. Instrument inside. It usually comes packaged in pairs. Always hand to the surgeon with the sharp claws facing downward. Mayo Hagar Needle Holder, also known as Heavy Needle Driver. It is for suturing and stapling. It is a broader jaw that is rounded at the tip with crisscross pattern on the inner jaws. It is used for holding heavy needles when suturing. The type of procedure and depth of the wound will determine the type and size of the needle holder. Richardson Eastman Retractor or Double-Ended Rich Retractor, Eastman Retractor or Big Rich Retractor. A handheld double-ended retractor with a lateral curvature of the blades. The bodies of the blades are concave with crescent-shaped lips that are laterally bent. It is used for retraction of wound edges. At initiation of the incision, the superficial end of the retractor is used. As the incision is deepened, the longer blade is used. Diver Retractor A flat stainless steel strip that resembles a question mark. The width and length vary according to need. It is used for deep retraction of organs and viscera. Retraction with the diver sometimes can be awkward because of the flat shape of the handle. To aid in maintaining a grip, the handle should be placed in the palm of the hand and the hook should be placed over the top of the hand. Suction Irrigator Long, straight, hollow suction tube attached to a combination tubing that has a suction valve and an irrigation valve. It is used to irrigate and aspirate fluid and debris from the surgical site. There are many types and manufacturers of suction irrigators, such as gravity, pumped, or battery-operated.